Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video we're going to talk about custom settings. And this this might be a little bit older topic um, because Salesforce already now has custom metadata types but custom settings are still there and, and I'm, I'm, I still use it for a um, lot of different use cases. And um, this d really helps admins to um, follow all the best practices and be awesome. So. I'm gonna link this um, link on the description, but um, quickly, um, there are two types of custom settings, list and hierarchy. And custom settings are mostly used if you want to be, um, if you want to reduce number of queries that you're making because custom settings um, don't require to run queries every time you uh, refer to them. So, and in admins, uh, it's mostly used in formula fields, um, process builders, validation rules, flows, etc. And it, it is also used in Apex. Um, the list custom settings, um, I usually don't use it anymore uh, because of custom metadata types, but usually they are used in places where uh, you don't need to be profile specific. So all the, all the users in the system will have same uh, access to list settings. So let's say if you wanna country co code some stuff like um, Philadelphia, you wanna say PA or you want to code your cities or postal codes based on the cities things of that nature and that value is always static and it's not changing that's when you use list settings or uh, list custom settings or custom editor types um, the problem is with custom settings list settings is that it doesn't migrate over when you move uh, things from sandbox to production you'll have to data upload again in production which is why custom editor types is a lot better um, and I also have a video on that which I can link you to um, but we're, we're going to talk about hierarchy custom settings here because they are, um, they are more profile specific. So you can actually define which profile you want, um, that hierarchy to have access to. And then for example, um, you might have different sales, um, discount, for example, um, go a certain profile sales profile might be able to give a discount of maybe a higher percent. So you can set the location and also the value. For that um, for that profile for example they are able to give 20% discount certain profiles or higher profiles and then there is another lower profiles which only can give access give discount for 10% for example in that case you'll use hierarchy custom settings because it actually lets you define the location and there's also a default org level um, hierarchy custom settings and also the great great part about that is that when you migrate from sandbox to production it takes um, the data as well so you don't need to um, you don't need to uh, up data upload or worry about the data in once it is in production. So, and um, today's example, we are going to use um, hierarchy custom settings in validation rules. And this is like um, the most used or the most time I've used custom settings or hierarchy custom settings is with validation rule because it makes your life so easier once you start custom, once you start using custom settings. Um, because we all might have gotten requests like, hey, I want this opportunity validation rule to run for these five profiles, but exclude these 10 other profiles. So it is fine to, there's nothing wrong with using the dollar symbol profile dot name equal to equal to system administrator, uh, super admin or whatever, and uh, exclude them from the validation rule. But imagine if your number of profiles that needs to be excluded becomes a lot and then you'll have to end up doing that, writing the, all that code inside your validation rule, which really makes it really messy. And also it's not really ideal um, if the profile name changes or I, I've even seen uh, profile ID might change when you mi migrate from sandbox to production. So enough talk, um, let's get started on how to actually use it. So I'm here on my custom settings and I'm just gonna create a quick, um, I'm gonna call it validation handler and it is upsetting hierarchy type and see how uh, we don't see the list view and actually you need to enable list custom settings because it's not enabled by default in newer orgs since uh, Salesforce is trying to push you towards custom metadata types. Um, and I'm gonna say visibility public, there's protected, uh, but we don't really need, it's, it's usually when you're storing a sensitive data, then that's when you wanna make it protected. And I'm gonna say custom fields um, and this is actually just a checkbox and I'm gonna say next enable um, opportunity validation 
and that's it. Um, you can leave the default checked or unchecked depending on uh, how frequently you're planning on using it. Um, and you can also have a disable opportunity validation. Um, again, it also depends on your use case, which is more. So do you want more profiles enabled or disabled? Basically, it's a question you need to ask yourself. And um, similar, in, similarly, you can have like multiple different objects. So I can have enable work order validation, enable account, case, whatever. So you can actually create custom fields for all those different uh, objects validation rules. And once you're done creating all the fields, you can go to manage and here you'll see you have a default default organization level and then you have new another new here where you can actually define location so i'm going to say new here and the profile level um, i'm just going to go ahead and show you system admin because i'm logged in a system admin but you can put a sales profile or whatever profile you want the validation to be activated for and you just check this box so and then I'm also going to say, let's go back to the list. And I'm going to say default should be, probably I want the default to be inactive for everybody else. So that you don't miss other profiles. And that is pretty much it. And then let's say if you had more, um, let's go back there. If you had more objects, so... For certain profile, you might want to enable opportunity, but you don't want to enable account, case, etc. So you can leave them unchecked. And now um, let's go to the object and actually create a validation rule. So I'm going to go to opportunity, create a validation rule. I'm sure everybody is uh, is aware of this step. Just let, let's just uh, really quickly create this so I'm just gonna say amount less than 500 do not create do not let people entering amount less than 500 that's my validation rule so here this is where uh, you need to pay attention is setup dot validation handler this all the custom settings appear under setup so if you had more than one custom settings it would be setup dot whatever other custom setting name might be and all the fields will appear here so enable custom validation and checkbox insert so when you say this, it means it will actually look at the profile level. So since I have system administrator set as the location, when I run the when I run when I added an opportunity, th this will know that okay, system admin is running the opportunity. Then it will go in and go in and check if that checkbox is true or not, and it will let me um, update or not update based on that. So and then hit and um, insert field, and I'm going to say mount less than 500 because that's our criteria and then um, cannot edit uh, make sure you have a meaningful error message than that and then save it and let me quickly show you how it looks so we have we just have a random opportunity here click edit and it is $70 which is less than 500 so I'm just gonna save it and I should see an error cannot edit um, and that's that's it that's how now let's say if your business comes back to you and says Oh, actually, we want to have that same validation rule for other profiles as well. And now it's so simple for you. All you need to do, go new and then add another profile here. Let's say I'm going to say sales. Oops, sales. I think it's called custom sales profile. Yep. Custom sales profile and enable it. That, that's all you need to do. Um, and disabling is easier to and if they want to go back and be like no we don't want it for custom sales profile then you just disable it there um, easy enough um, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something uh, please let me know if you want, have any other questions or any of the topics that you want me to make videos on thank you so much for watching